Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forged. It's the end of May when I'm making this video and probably early June when you're watching this video, but it's only 40 degrees in the shop today. It actually dusted a little bit of snow last night, got down almost to freezing. The one thing about Colorado weather is you can always count on it to be unpredictable. About a week ago, it was already getting up into the 80s and it was starting to feel like a really long, hot summer before spring was even done with. But anyways, let's get on to today's video. I thought we would make a ladle. We have looked at making several different kinds of spoons. We've looked at forks. We've made a little spatula. But let's look at a larger, more classic looking forged iron ladle. I'm going to do this out of a single piece. You could certainly forge weld to gain mass. You can make the bowl for the ladle out of a separate piece, rivet it to a handle. And in a lot of ways, that's easier to do. But the classic colonial style ladle is typically made from a single piece. I'm going to start with a piece of quarter by inch and a half that is eight inches long. So that makes this about six millimeters by 40 millimeters by about 205 millimeters, somewhere in there. Sizes aren't absolutely critical. The technique's the same even if you use larger or smaller material. So let's go get this hot and let's get started. I want to start our spatula by isolating the mass. Then I just line it up at the edge of the anvil and try and keep my hammer and my anvil edge lined up. This is going to need a pretty big neck in it. So if you don't have any fullers to do this job, that works quite well. But if you have a fullering jig or some other fullering option, smithing magician, guillotine tool type thing, it can actually make this a little easier on you. Now I actually want to take this down quite a ways. Ultimately I'm going to want that to be about a half inch wide I think. And it's in doing this, I'm trying to round the bowl of the spatula up a little bit. Just trying to keep everything even and neat. Now the handle end is just up to what you want it to look like. I'm going to try and take this down so I have a fairly thin handle section. This is one advantage to forge welding up the mass. You can start with a smaller piece for the handle and you don't have to do as much drawing out. I think I'll come back and fuller her in here and then we'll draw that out and leave something that will be in the middle of the handle for a decorative element. Here are the roughed out stages. It's very rough at this point. Everything still needs a lot of refining. I've got the ladle bowl here. Transition into the handle. The handle will get rounded up. This mass I've left in the middle, it's really ugly. I'm hoping to forge into a little ball element. Then a round segment of the handle through here, and then we'll flatten this out, which will be the part you actually hold on to. So it's going to be a pretty big ladle. I've probably uh, been a little ambitious with it. And we're looking at about 45 minutes of forging to get to this point. So again, if you're comfortable forge welding, starting with a smaller piece of material that makes more sense for the handle, 
And then forge welding a larger mass in to make the bowl out of makes a lot of sense. It'll probably save you time. But if you're not comfortable with forge welding, you can do this all by drawing out from a larger piece of material. Just plan to spend a little more time at the anvil. I'm going to work on trying to refine this mass for the ball in the middle a little bit. You can upset it down. This will take a lot of filing in the long run. As long as the mass is there though, we can do that. I'm work it down in a little swedge. It's a half inch swedge there. Having a top and bottom swedge this size would probably help. And I have that for the power hammer, but not for the anvil. Now, I don't want to always give you the impression you have to have a power hammer. I'm going to reduce the shaft here a little bit. Make it easier to get a more dramatic ball shape there. I'm trying to leave a little fat section for a transition there. Really about 5 sixteenths round is about what I want, so that's probably something like 8 millimeter round. This is not a reproduction of any specific historical label. but it is sort of inspired by the historical ones. So I think I'll just make a guess here and cut off what I don't want. Well, you could put a little curly cue on the end of this to hang it from, punch a hole in it. But I think this one, I'm going to leave just that kind of oval shape at the end, rounded end. I'm going to add my touch mark to the back of the handle. I'm just going to lightly swedge it to give it some contour. And any final shaping this way, I'll end up doing after the ladle is done, even though I kind of like where it's going there. So I promise we will get a ladle out of this. Start by spreading the bowl a little bit. Just working on its roundness some. And that 
little transition is about what I want right there. Sometimes a narrower am anvil face comes in handy. And if you move around a little bit, you can usually find a place that works. Now I'm going to go to a big rounding hammer and spread that. Now the goal is to have a round disc on the end of the handle when we're done. I'm getting a little bit of a half face blow at the edge of that transition. At this point, it's really just a matter of how big do you want this disc and how much volume do you want the ladle to have. I'd like it to be a little bit thinner. Just trying to get it nice and smooth at this point. Working on that little transition on the back here. Comes a little point, which I like. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. So I'm a little bit over three inches round, so that's about 80 millimeters round probably. That's about the minimum that I would want, which is why you start with such a big piece of material. Or again, forge weld up some mass by folding it over once or twice to get more mass there. And I think I am going to let this cool at this point. I'm going to clean that up with a file to make sure that it's a smooth round disc. It'll be easier to do flat than it will be after we dish it. And as I'm filing that, I think I'll deal with this and get it roughed in with a file a little bit better or even a grinder and get that closer so that we can finish all the forging and then go to the last filing steps. All I want to do is just get this round and smooth. Clean up the round a little bit and start to define my ball in the middle here. I'm going to do pretty much all of this just with this one big half round file. That's still going to need some more refinement, but it's pretty well roughed in. It's going to be okay, but all in all, it's not as impressive as I thought. I don't think it's worth all the effort I've put into trying to create that little ball detail in the middle. I'm going to start this in this larger swedge just so I can 
bring it into the dish shape slowly. If I do this, it'll score around the edges. So I just want to bring it up a little at a time. Try not to let the edges buckle up too much. If you end up with little wrinkles in there, they're really hard to get out. It's getting closer to fitting that. You could also do this in a wooden stump or on the upside down oxygen cylinder base. This really works just about as well. You don't have a sludge block. The sludge blocks are awfully handy though. They do lots more than just make spoons and ladles. I'm going to try not to gouge the outside or work kind of in here like this. Again, go slow or you'll end up with wrinkles, and it's really hard to get the wrinkles out. Walk sessions. You can see it's just got a little bit of a twist, so if I go back every time after this, take another heat and straighten that, then things go better. I think that's about as good as we can really expect here. Needs to be straightened one more time. Really wants to bow. So just very gently straighten that. You can probably do some of this cold if you need to. Now the next question is, what do we want this to look like this way? I want to put a little bit of a gentle curve in here, I think. Cool the bowl off a little bit so I don't mess it up. Not too much there. I think I do want a gentle curve throughout. This is all just fiddling until it looks the way you want it to look. And what you see in your head when you start might not be what you want when you're done, so... Because I'm, I'm seeing this a little different as I go here. I think I'm going to shape the handle the way I want it first. Something tells me that the curve I've got in the bowl, or down at the neck there, isn't really quite what I want. I haven't made a spatula in many years, so bear with me here. Or excuse me, I haven't made a ladle in many years, so bear with me. So I don't even know what I'm making here. So I think I like this pretty well.
I guess seeing an S curve in my head is what was wrong because I really like this long gentle curve much better. This is sort of an artistic ladle. I don't know how much practical use you put it through, but it will certainly uh, scoop out a bowl of soup for you. So mostly I'm just trying to straighten it so it's in a straight line from the handle to the bowl in this orientation. Again, you just make this what it is you think your ladle needs to look like. There's going to be lots of filing left to do on this. Now generally I'm pretty happy with this. The bowl came out just fine. That's a good size for it. And I'm not too displeased with the shape. I think it's too long. I think it could have been a little bit shorter. I cut some off, but maybe if we started with six inches of material, that would have been better. My idea for a little ball in the middle just hasn't really worked out very well, but it is there. And we're going to save it and it's going to look okay, just not as dramatic as I thought it should. The last thing I want to do with this is file it clean. It would certainly be your option to leave this in the black, which means as forged, or you file it clean and leave it in the white, which is often referred to as white smithing. Now this is a long process. It can take as long to file something like this as it takes you to forge it, depending on how clean your forging is. So I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me file this for the next hour, hour and a half, maybe even two hours. Instead, stick around to the last 30 seconds of the video. I'll have a close up of the finished ladle. You can see what I ended up with, but trust me, it's just a matter of work with a file. In the meantime, I hope you can make it out to your shop, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, We'll see you for the next one.